Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program with me, Nihai Hobo. Now we have a bit of a special today. This is actually a post commentary I'm doing. This uh, footage was recorded at about 2 o'clock in the morning uh, when I couldn't sleep. And it's in response to a comment that was made um, by one of the subscribers. And basically it says that... Um, if the developers hadn't fixed the landing legs, there is no way I would have been able to have made the landing from um, uh, from the Minmus mission uh, that um, uh, that we did the the walking on Minmus last time. So, challenge accepted. Except, um, what you're going to notice about this is. Despite the fact at the moment it still looks like the same rocket, and it's actually in fast-forward mode. This took me about an hour and ten minutes to do, in total. So it's about 400 times sped up, but uh, it slows down when we actually get to the planet. Um, the, the three fuel cells at the top of the rocket are missing, um, along with all of the landing legs. So this rocket is going to touch down on Minmus, but it's going to do it without a single landing leg at all. Now... I'm pretty sure that if I can do that, that um, uh, the uh, it, it doesn't matter how fragile the landing legs are, I would have made that landing. I actually think it was actually a pretty good landing um, in the first place. So, by the by, um, so what we've already done there is we've been through stage one and two, and we're just about to get into an orbit around Kerbin. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead in a second um, for the, the transit section between Kerbin and Minmus. Because, like I say, uh, I haven't really got a great amount of uh, great amount of time. The important bits, though, they're all slowed down. Um, oh, the other thing as well is the rocket has to be able to make it back as well. So it's it's one thing touching down on Minmus, but if the engine falls off, I'm not allowed to. That that doesn't count. The rocket has to be able to take back off again. Okay, so um, here we are. Then we we're just at the moment starting to. Um, look at putting ourselves into a decent position to intercept Minmus, but as I say, it's going to be a couple of days around. I think in total this mission was 17 Kerbin days. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm giving myself a flight path which is never going to be interrupted by the Mun and also isn't going to be affected by Minmus, um, sorry, by Kerbin itself either. Um, because uh, the first time I tried to do this, this isn't the only attempt. It, this did take a, a, a few attempts to to get done. So uh, it's no it's no magical landing. Um, Minmus did keep um, Kerbin did keep on grabbing me and slowly pulling me down and down and down. And I didn't realise until it was too late and I got slammed into the atmosphere at times one million or whatever the the fastest fast forward is. You've seen me do it a thousand times. So. Um, I wasn't having any luck with naturally getting onto an interception path, so when I got close enough to Kerbin, uh, to Minmus, as I thought um, we should have started to have been affected by its pull, um, I went into first person mode back there and uh, I pointed the rocket at, Min uh, at Minmus and just blasted it until this projection came up. Um, and now we're just going to adjust our flight path so that um, we are going to be completely affected by Minmus's gravitational field. Minmus's. What's the plural? Minmise? Minmus's? Minmus? Hmm, don't know. In the comments, pop something down there and uh, and let us know. Um, so, yeah, there we go. We're now in an orbit with uh, Minmus. So we're just going to shrink that down to begin with, and then we're going to start picking a landing spot. Um... So you see all the crap that's around Minmus as well, all the other space debris from the other missions that uh, have gone up there. Um, now, as it shrinks, I think it's uh, it's towards the top of where the uh, periapsis is now. That's sort of where the lake is, I think, that we uh, that I eventually decide to to hit on, hit on like your sister, and um. Because, again, that big frozen lake to the left there, that's the one I like to land on, but uh, I just don't think there's anything to... Uh, it would take too long to orientate it. So I uh, I decided to opt for 
um, this one that you can see the lines dragging through it now. You'll eventually, I'll do that that one there. That is going to be the landing position. So the idea is to get up to the apparent axis and then put a retro burn on, and then drag the trajectory so that it's at the far side of that frozen river, lake, sea, ocean, call it what you will. Uh, I'll zoom out in a second and you'll see me um, watching that line change. Oh yeah, the um, the nav ball kept on getting in the way. So there you go, it's on the, it's on the far side. Then we switch down to the manual view. I think in a minute um, I eject this next stage and then um, we we cut away. Uh, and, and come back again. You also notice as well I got rid of all the sounds because I was watching uh, I was watching something on my phone, so that's in the background. But also you get uh, stupid noises. So I did this a little bit prematurely to begin with, and it, later on it, it caused us some problems. But um, I shouldn't have really slowed down. I should have given it another probably ten or twenty seconds. Uh, before putting another burn on to make sure that I was well into the middle of that ocean. But at the moment, I've actually just ejected that and put myself, started to square myself away. Um, so I'm going to touch down on the shore. You can see that trajectory that it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse as, uh, as everything goes, uh, as we, we get closer to it. And you see I'm trying to make adjustments there to get myself away from it. And I think I've done enough... Uh, it later on transpires that actually didn't, that perspective doesn't show. So here we go, we're coming on to the, the final stages in our last 2,000 metres. I think at about 500 metres I drop back into the the footage being uh, its normal speed. So, uh, it's oh, it's Jebediah that we've got taking us up as well. There he is, tripping balls, he's as happy as you like. Um, so here we go, oh, so last, last 100 metres then. Um, we, there we go, so we slowed down to a normal speed, we're down into the 60s, 50s, at 3 metres a second, 40s, at 2 metres a second. So this is it, all very gentle, you see, like I say, no landing legs. There is a ladder because I'm going to get out and show you that the, the, the thing stands up on its own. and it's not The, the shadow's creeping in at the left there, you see that the, 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 uh, the, um, the what's-its-face line uh, is tripping balls. The... S, uh, the RCS fuel saved me that. I'm pretty sure I would have toppled over had it not been for the RCS fuel. But, nonetheless, we're down without landing legs. Safely, engines are cut. And Jebediah can now get out. Oh, I want... Uh, yeah, I quickly saved it as well, just in case I fucked up the, the takeoff. And... So um, as soon as he lets go of the ladder, I'm going to turn his turn it on so he has his jets, and then we're going to slow his descent so he doesn't face plant into Minmus. And there you go. That also gives you a bit of a scale to the size of the rocket. So there's four full fuel tanks at the bottom stage, plus one at the top. Two tanks of... Um, well, so I've only used about half a tank getting down onto Minmus. So there's three and a half tanks in the bottom stage, and the top stage hasn't been used at all, so that's a full tank. There's, I think one and a half tanks of RCS fuel, but I'm not sure. Um, but as you can see, the, the thing is very top heavy. I'm pretty sure that if I slammed into it with Jebediah, I could knock it over um, on here. But we're going to climb back into the cockpit. And we're going to take off. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to jump back to the re-entry. Uh, this is back into the fast forward mode now, by the way. Um, we're going to come back to the re-entry and um, I'm going to show you the, the the successful landing back on uh, Kerbin. I think we'll just start with just getting a bit of an arc together just to show you that it's all been done legitimately. Like I say, I, I'm, I would have put this up as one whole episode and, and shown you the mistakes and uh, where I've had to reload it and, and so on and so forth. But um, I'm capped by the, the YouTube limits. So here we are. We're coming into the last 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 100, 9, 100, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. A jet parachutes, 2, 1, 60 meters, slows down to 4 meters a second to put down into the ocean and then what we're going to do is just going to have a quick look at the um, post-flight analysis 
There you go, nice safe splash down. Jebediah is nice and happy. And um, it doesn't actually tell you a lot in the, the flight events, but we put 8G down. Um, right. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Nihai Hobo, and I will see you again. Goodbye.